going on, everybody? Welcome to Spotlight 39. I'm Rob Odie, and as you see, we got another special guest. We're going to talk about a, a huge showcase. You know, it's one of the biggest in the country, if not the biggest. I had the pleasure of doing it last year. But before we get into all of that and get into the nuts and bolts, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Support the brand that supports you. More importantly, let's continue to help these kids get the exposure that they deserve. So, that being said, that out the way, man. Dr. Perry, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're from, what you do, and then let's get into a nice conversation about this amazing showcase that uh, I got to experience last year and looking forward to doing another round here in 2024. Well, Rob, first off, I appreciate you having me on the show. I mean, we connected through uh, through IG last year and realized you're from Virginia, so am I, born and raised in Allegheny County, uh, graduated from Allegheny High School, so this is, uh, just like you said, this is, this is all about the kids. Um, actually, I started the, something like the showcase at the University of Michigan 2015. I put seven schools from the east side versus seven schools from the west side. They get to play at the big house. I mean, if you, if you're at, if you go to school in Michigan, what better place than to play at the big house? Yeah, I mean, you know, that, go, go blue. That's, you know, now given, I say you don't do that. You know, now we're starting to see more and more, you know, states, you know, open it up to, to playing in NFL stadiums, playing it in bigger, you know, college stadiums. But, you know, a handful of years ago, that wasn't a thing. So that's pretty cool. No, yeah, it started in 2015. Uh, when I got to Florida 2016, I mentioned it to the um, the athletic director of Broward County, which was Sean, Sean Sarah, who's instrumental in all this. I'll get into more of, about that later. But, you know, I. Being from Virginia, they said Flo South Florida's got the best athletes in America. So I said, hey, well, there's only one way to, to find out. And for me, being a, a former coach, that's between the white lines. That's so it. I took that same concept from, you know, I, I did Battle of the Big House and brought it to South Florida. And here we are, year three. So year three, has it always been the Broward County Showcase or did it start off as something and then kind of evolved? It's always been Broward County. Okay. And uh, the same concept applied year one as it does, you know, year three, where we bring in a handful of, you know, out-of-state programs that are typically pretty dominant in their space and then bring them to South Florida, let them enjoy, you know, the beautiful surroundings first and foremost, and then have, a you know, a pretty nice competition on the field against some of Broward County's uh, best programs. Sound about right? Yeah, it's it's amazing. We take seven schools from Broward County. We bring in seven schools from uh, first two years was out of state. This year we're trying something new. We have two in-state opponents coming to Broward. You know, in -state. Late, one of one of them. Yeah, late, we have. Say, look, Noah Grubbs has led that program, and the kids are twenty-six. Notre Dame commit. I've I've been chopping it up with his uh, QB trainer. Bailing, you know, for the last couple of nights, knocking out some videos. We actually got a Noah Grubbs one uh, coming out here soon, so stay tuned. But Lake Mary, like, that's the Friday night, right? So you got Lake Mary, then you got the the Milton and Heritage game. So so you make you make me choose. I don't like that, but I got to choose something, right? And then down the street, you know, not that it's part of the showcase, but it's worth mentioning because it is a big game. You got Lakeland in, in Miami Central. You know, all Friday night bangers in South Florida, you know, that's that's outrageous. I mean, those are three primetime games, and you got to scratch your head on, like, man, which one am I going? So I got Lake Mary yeah. on my, you know, my list, but, you know, go ahead. I didn't want to steal the thunder, but, uh, you know, Lake Mary coming down south. No, that's, you said that Friday night, it's it, it's crazy. You got a Notre Dame commit, then with the Milton quarterback, uh, Luke is committed to Miami. Now, Dia Bell, he's on the scene now for American Heritage, committed to Texas. That's three out of four. And I know Cardinal Gibbons has a decent quarterback. You know, he hasn't determined what school yet, but that's that's huge. You got three major power five quarterbacks playing on Friday night. Yeah, I mean, the, the Friday night, that's no pushover, right? But then, but then you make it even more challenging because then you, you got a Saturday slate of games. So let's just talk about some of those out-of-state programs. So maybe circle back because we don't want to leave out, you know, the Thursday night matchup. So – yeah, we'll start with Thursday. Let's talk about Thursday. So we've got – who do we got on the, on the bill for Thursday? I'll let you kind of talk us through it. Oh, we got Monarch, who has been getting better and better, and they had a deep run in the playoffs, I think, semifinals last year. And bringing in Peachtree Ridge, who the head coach, Matt Helmrich, good friend of mine, actually was 
a defensive coordinator at St. Thomas for a while. So he's coming back to Broward County and bringing his, his team, which PC Ridge, they're, they're knocking on the door to be one of those top contenders in Georgia. So that Florida-Georgia matchup, you know, the two neighboring states, that's going to be huge. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, it's going to be fun to watch. Petrie Ridge, I mean, they're loaded with D1 guys. Monarch, you know, they may not necessarily be, quote, loaded with D1 guys, but I watched Monarch play last year, and I, I followed them throughout the season, and they just continue to get better and better. Uh, so that's definitely yep. a program, you know, to, to be on upset alert, right? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Monarch came, you know, came out with the win, you know, Peachtree's coming, you know, a, a little ways away. So, you know, they might have that travel lag. But honestly, I think Monarch does have the, the skill set that could potentially, you know, knock off Peachtree. But on the flip side, Peachtree is loaded. So it will be a fun game to watch. So outside of that, we've got Coach who? Bridgewater, I think is Coach Bridge is what he's going by, right? And, uh, you know, yeah. Western, and, and who are they playing? Where are they yeah, coming? we got back to we got back to back, same location, both at Coconut Creek High School. We got Coconut Creek, who proved dominant, who actually beat Monarch last year. So they are hosting Miami Northwestern, which we know we got Teddy. He, it's his first year as a head coach at his alma mater. I remember watching him when he won a national championship at Miami Northwestern. So he's he's turning the program around. He's got the discipline. He's got the experience. I'm really excited to see what both of those. I, I think that's going to be a back and forth matchup all night. Both games actually. It's going. It's going to be an entertaining Thursday night. I'm look. I'm flying in Thursday morning. So, you know, I'm coming off the plane, dropping the bags at the hotel, and I'm going straight to the field, uh, just like I did last year, man. It's, it, it was a lot of fun, and the fact that you know you made it a little easier. You know, you're putting putting multiple games at a stadium. You know, makes my Uber rides a little a little more cost efficient. So I appreciate that. But uh, let's get to Friday, man. Friday, stack loaded. What do you got for us? What's what's on the bill? Because I think the graphics a little off. I think you know some changes have been made. But what's Friday looking like? Yeah, Friday we got Lake Mary, like you said, Orlando area coming down to play Cardinal Gibbons. That those offenses, they're just. They're, they're, I think Lake Mary just had a lineman commit to Miami Northwestern. Noah has two one thousand yard receivers coming back, a thousand yard running back coming back. That's going to be a shootout. I, I'm expecting a lot of high power offense in that game because Cardinal Gibbons they can go up and down the field with the best of them. Yeah, I mean Cardinal Gibbons again, another program that's consistently you know locked in year in year out. They continue to make a run, um, you know, and then, and then Lake Mary. I mean Lake Mary, that's going to be a matchup to watch. Central Florida, you know, South Florida, that's fun. What else we got? Well, at the same time at. Um, at St. Thomas, we got American Heritage hosting Milton, the defending state champs in Georgia. So you got two powerhouses. You got a public powerhouse, private powerhouse, both loaded with Power Five kids, both with great coaching. I, I'm excited for that game too. I mean, you got a, a Miami quarterback commit and a Texas quarterback commit. Both are 26, I think. I could be wrong. I think Milton's quarterback yes. might be five. Um, I'll double check, but nonetheless, still two. Milton's young. twenty. Milton's twenty five. Yep, gotcha. And then, and then yeah, uh, Milton's twenty five. There it is, twenty six. Yeah. So again, you know, two <laughs> powerhouse D one program QB commits, and then they've got an arsenal behind them. I mean, American Heritage. They got a couple of running backs. You know, that's made a name for themselves. They got a couple of wide receivers, a couple of linemen, a couple of you know DBs, linebackers. I mean, they're locked in. They're locked in. So, you know, that's going to be fun. And then Milton, I personally, I get to kick off the season. I got Milton versus Buford in Atlanta um, the week before. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. So I'll get a little preview of what Milton has to offer before they, you know, they make the trip down south. Um, but let's carry into Saturday, man. What's what's Saturday got to offer? Yo, locked and loaded. Sa Saturday is, yeah, Saturday's huge. We got at 4 o'clock. St. Thomas is hosting defending national champion Bishop Gorman. I mean, it's not – that's all you got to do. Just say those two school names. You got two national powerhouses going at it, 4 o'clock on a Saturday. All the attention, all the eyes at 4 o'clock are going to be at St. Thomas Aquinas High School. And I just need to chime in and personally say thank you for that. I think last year the first game was like noon, 
And, and I'm pretty sure, you know, I don't remember, you know, the second half of the, the St. John's uh, American Heritage game. I was completely blacked out from being beat up by the sun. Before clock, I appreciate it. But it doesn't stop there. What else have we got? No, at four. Then at, at six o'clock, we got a kickoff at Western High School. Western is going to be hosting Hoover, Alabama, which if you're if you're around my age, then we all remember the two a days back in the day. Actually, believe it or not, it's their twenty year anniversary this year. Oh, is it really? That's kind of yep. cool. For the two a day that show came out. So again, now you got an Alabama powerhouse, you got a South Florida powerhouse, two public schools going at it and that's what's good. We we try to keep it that way, but like I said, now you got a public in Alabama, a public in Florida. Only one way to find out, and that's in between the white lines. And I know Hoover's bringing that. It's like Friday Night Lights. They're shutting down the town and bringing I can a lot of people to that game. If, if the if the stands aren't full, you know, then then flights were canceled or something because there's no way in the world Hoover fans, you know, family, all that. They're making that trip. They're coming to South Florida, not just for the football game, for what South Florida has to offer, which we'll get to that after we talk about this last matchup. What's the what's the what's the last one on the bill? The the eight o'clock the nightcap, we got uh St. John Bosco coming back from California. And they're gonna be playing number the Shamanah Madonna, who finished number two in the country last year. So um I, again, just it, it, this is heavyweight fights throughout all seven games over three days. And like you said, I mean, I I don't like to toot our own horn, but I think we got the best high school football weekend in America on the week one. Yeah, I mean, look, again, you know, I might be slightly biased, you know, because you're from Virginia, I'm Virginia. I love, you know, South Florida personally. But in all honesty, man, this showcase did not disappoint. And from a media aspect, uh, I mean, you guys roll out the red carpet. Last year, you see the logo on the screen, Dave and Buster's, they had the grills fired up at every stadium. They were, you know, under the white tent. They had all the Angus beef you could eat, you know, with all kinds of free chicken the kids. Um, you guys kept the cold beverages, you know, the Gatorades, the waters. I mean, it was first class through and through, you know, from a media point of view to the point where, you know, we're almost a year later and I'm still talking about it almost on a whole weekly basis to anybody and everybody saying y'all need to make this trip. If you're thinking about something else, come to South Florida because you won't be disappointed. You know, A, you got a slate of games that are just outrageous, you know, as far as national coverage. And then you got the host, you know, that just rolls out the red carpet. And then you got the area. The area is just, it's South Florida. Like, we're going to talk about that in a second. But I think we want to spend a little bit of time thanking, you know, those that, that helped make this thing possible, right? Because without those, you couldn't yep. do so talk to us about the sponsors, you know, what do they bring to the table, um, you know, and, and, you know, show them some love. Well, the, the biggest thing, this would not even happen if it wasn't for our sponsors. And the, the reason I say that what we do for the visiting teams, we offer, we, we cover two nights in a hotel room. We give them three meals a day, two charter buses. A uh, trip to Dave and Buster's where they get to eat and have tw- each kid and coach gets a $20 play card, plays games, and another Florida attraction. You know, whether it's the Jungle Queen, whether it's riding on the airboats in the Everglades, it, it's up to the teams to decide. But we cannot make it possible if it wasn't for our sponsors. I, I'll, I'll name a few, but I don't want anyone to think I'm, I'm leaving anybody out because we do have a lot to cover all this. But Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital, absolutely amazing what they've done. I mean, and what they do for our community as well. You know, they run the training program for all of our, all of our high school with the U18 program. So their, their medical team is amazing and outstanding. Adidas with the apparel, each team gets a shirt, a bag from Adidas. This year, we're going to add a few extra things. I don't want to give it away for the kids to, to hear just yet. But um, and Dave and Buster's, like you said, not only do they host a, each team at their facilities, but they give us a legit barbecue for the VIP tent, for media. It, it, it comes in huge. And we got like you, you mentioned South Florida. You got to visit Lauderdale. I mean, that's th- this is South Florida. And some schools don't start till after Labor Day. So the parents, the kids, they can treat it like a vacation when they're done playing. And uh, Shriners Club, that's another big one of our sponsors. 
but it, it all starts with um, the Broward Education Foundation. You know, we got a new CEO, James Knapp. If it wasn't for him, uh, former CEO, Shea Sariago, it wouldn't happen. And now Sean, for the former Broward County Athletic Association, now he's over with uh, the Broward Education Foundation, overseeing the, the athletic arm, which we are the only 501c3 in the country that has an athletic arm right now. Really? So we're, 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 we're trendsetters. We're, we're starting something new and showing people that this works. So along with, uh, you know, like I said, with Sean and James, this wouldn't be possible without them. And since I did mention BCAA, they are huge when it comes to us. And that's the Broward County Athletic Association, ran by uh, Patty Brown, Rocky Gillis, Kristen Garcia, Jen Hamilton. It's just, it's an amazing team and it takes a team to put on such a big event over three days. Now, y'all, y'all see three days, but for us, it's 12 months. I was going to say, I mean, but those... <laughs> in, you know, year round, and for me, you know, from a media you know, perspective, as soon as last year's event ended, you know, we got through the season, I, I don't even know. I, I hit you probably like two months ago, three months ago. It was like, hey, when's the schedule dropping? Hey, we got the teams confirmed. Yep. What's it looking like? When can I lock in my credentials? Like, I'm ready to go. I, I have people asking me before they left, you got next year's schedule yet? Yeah, so last, I, I will tell you, I'm yeah. already in talks for 2025 with teams. So I, I was going to say, stay you tuned. told me last year, you know, at, you know, at the, the Bosco game, you said, look, you just wait till next year. I got some things that I'm working on and you didn't disappoint. You brought in Gorman, you brought back Bosco, you're bringing in Alabama. Like we've got talent from, you know, powerhouse locations. And then you said to heck with it, you know, we're going to bring some in-state competition and bring them to South Florida and let them go to go to battle. So it's going to be a lot of fun, man. So outside of this event, outside of, you know, what, you know, what you guys do for the programs, you know, what's in the area that these, you know, families can look forward to when they, they make the trip, you know, in the event that they stay longer than those two days, maybe they make it a short vacation or even maybe a full vacation. What's in, you know, the South Florida area that's, uh, you know, worth their time and, and investment. I guess a better question is what's not here. And that's what got me to move to South Florida from Virginia. South Florida has, it, it, they offer everything. Whether you, you just like the, the chill and relaxed beach, you like the, the party vibe, the nightlife, it, it doesn't matter. And they got so many different things for the, the, the families. So it's kid friendly as well. There's so many different attractions that South Florida offers and a lot of, Parents do turn it into a vacation. They'll keep the kids here and then just fly back on a Sunday and make sure they make it back to school on Monday. Yeah, I mean, it, unfortunately, I didn't get a lot of downtime. You know, like I said, I got off the plane, dropped, and I was at the field, you know, what seemed to be, you know, as soon as I got off the plane, went back to the hotel, started to upload some some content, took a nap, woke up, rinse and repeat, man. Uh, but, you know, it was a lot of fun, took a lot out of me but I'm ready to do it year two. Um, so what else do you want to talk to talk to everybody about, you know, this Broward County Showcase? We didn't talked about the, the matchups. We didn't talked about the sponsors and what they do. So again, thank you to all the sponsors that make this thing happen. Um, you talked about how, well, I talked about how you guys roll out the red carpet for the media. You know, what else, what else is, you know, can we expect from the Broward County Showcase? You know, obviously the environment's electric. It's, you know, very fan friendly, um, you know, Just from my experience last year, there was no, you know, outside the box ignorance or, or, you know, anything that, you know, dampered the mood. It was all, you know, fun and games. It was friendly competition, Um, you know, to talk to. What else we got? So, Rob, the the biggest thing and reason why I put this in, um, I was doing my dissertation, 2015, and it's actually on how the academic progress rate affects college recruiting. So by doing that, speaking to 56 college power five schools, you realize less than 1% of high school kids actually get to continue this journey from high school to college. That being said, we treat this as a bowl game for our kids. Because if we can, tr- if we can have our kids experience 
a bowl game that they might not get to experience in college, that means everything to us. And and going back, I was blessed in uh, 2010. You know, two guys I owe, uh, Jesse Miller, Mike Barwis. They were, Mike Barwis is the head strength coach at Michigan. Jesse Miller actually hired me. I grew up a Michigan fan since I was nine years old. Watching, watching them run out that tunnel, hit that banner every single year. At the age of 29, I got to actually do it myself, September 4th, 2010. I'll never forget what it felt like to slap that banner look up and see 115,000 people. I mean, I, I literally have goosebumps telling the story right now. Awesome. If I can, if I can impact these kids in any way to fail, to feel what I did on that day, this is all worth it to all of us. Cause at the end of the day, we're educators. We're in this for the kids. So that being said, if, if we can impact these kids in any way, and it's exposure, it's guys like you doing these interviews, you, you doing interviews with kids, these kids got offers from playing in the showcase last year because they were visible across the country. Oh, absolutely. So I mean, that's, you know, still cameras, I mean, that, that, cameras, you get all the national recruiting analysts, you know, from on three rivals, two, four, seven. Um, I think, you know, you had ESPN obviously in the building. I mean, the exposure was times 10 because, you know, when, when I say you had on three, you didn't just have, Chad Simmons. I mean, you had Chad and like five other dudes, right? And then you had like yeah. six guys from Rivals, five or six guys from two. Like they brought the arsenal. And even though, you know, games were spread out a little more last year, you know, each game that I attended, they were still out in heavy force. It was still yeah. a ton of content, uh, which, like you said, the content and the exposure is really what benefits these young men because, sure, they might play, you know, at a powerhouse program. But a lot of times, those powerhouse programs aren't playing a powerhouse schedule, right? And like you just mentioned, you act, you know, as this is a bowl game, right? You're giving them that wow factor experience. So when these kids come in, you know, from Milton, Georgia, right? They come up, you know, Georgia's a hot bid for football, but you bring them to South Florida, that's a whole different game experience. And then you got Hoover, Alabama, you bring yeah. them to South Florida. You got Peachtree, right? You got Bishop. Bishop Gorman coming from the desert out in Nevada to South Florida and, and, and absolutely, you know, as the kids say these days, they want all the smoke, right? Unless maybe terminology changed, but <laughs> they want it all, right? They're not afraid of any comp, yep. um, you know, and it's just a lot of fun that we've got private programs. We got public programs. It doesn't matter, right? These kids come, they're going to lay it on the line, tons of, you know, cameras and video cameras and lots of exposure and more kids are going to get offers this year, right? You're going to find more kids yep. that maybe you didn't necessarily know a lot about. For one that comes to mind, right, is now a four-star wide receiver uh, playing at Shamanad. But last year, I think he was on Western, Mr. Kobe Howard. I mean, the young man put on a show. Mm -hmm. and I was I was like, whoa. Like, I didn't really know who Kobe Howard was, in all honesty, going into that game. After he showed out, we had a post-game interview. And then we wrapped, and I stayed connected all throughout the season to this point. We actually just messaged the other day. Um, and, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing him and his development, but I want to find out mm -hmm. next, right? You know, we've got some 27s that are going to be playing in these games. We even have a couple of 28s that I believe are going to be playing that are going to make a, a pretty big impact. And those are the kids that's really going to benefit because the exposure is not going to be there when they get home necessarily. You know, some of these schools, Hoover, you know, they don't have – they don't have a national schedule, right? Lake Mary, I mean, they, they play, you know, some solid competition, but again, it's not a full national schedule compared to a Bosco, a, you know, a Gorman, those types of programs who are used to playing powerhouse week in and week out. Some of these kids, they don't get to experience that. So they come to this event or in some cases, you know, the event invites them, you know, just being in the backyard in South Florida and they get to participate and they, you know, they have that one opportunity to go in and show out against a, a Bishop Gorman or a St. John Bosco and really make a name for themselves. And when they do that, what happens? The dominoes start to fall. That young man just, you know, started to get the exposure. And then he starts to get the stars that all the kids want. You know, it, it's, it's fun to watch and it's a blessing to be a part of. Um, so I'm personally looking forward to it, man. Well, you actually brought up two good points. So number one, 
I got to thank you and all the media members that do come and cover this because it's it's you that are getting the kids out there that's making us look good. It's not really us. It's about them. And like you that you just had the conversation with, about Kobe. It's exposing the kids. The more exposure we get for these kids, the better it's worth it. So thank you and all the media that's going to watch this. We can't do it without you. Secondly, I got to give out a shout out to all these coaches in schools. But before, nobody, everybody just wanted to schedule so-so so they could run the table, win a state title. For these coaches, as you said, to want the smoke, to go out on a national schedule now. If you pull up the schedules of these other schools, it's not just the showcase now. They got one, two, three, or four other games past the showcase on a national level against teams ranked in the top 100 in the country. So great job by those coaches because, like you said, when it comes to evaluating as a college recruiter, to play the best, the best versus the best, that says something. They want to see that four-star receiver going against that three-star DB or vice versa. That's that that says something about the the coaches and their mindset is playing the best to get more exposure for those kids as well. So again, big shout out to the media, big shout out to the coaches. It, it, it's just, it's all around great experience for the kids. Yeah. I mean, the, the experience is there, the location is there, the exposure is there. I mean, what, is it there, like you said, at the Broward County Showcase? So this was a lot of fun, man. We can continue to talk football for hours and hours, but we're gonna, yeah. keep, you know, we're gonna keep it a small sample. We're gonna thank the sponsors again. You know, the ones that are on the screen, we got Adidas, Dave and Buster's, Joe DiMaggio Children Hospital. So thank you to those and all the others that make this showcase a thing. Um, because without you guys hosting it, I can't come to South Florida and enjoy it. These kids can play in it and get the exposure that they deserve. So it goes hand in hand. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, look, Dr. Perry, is that is that you know what we go by? I feel like you know I got to figure out what I want to call you, right, or what what I need to call you because you, you can't. Yeah, be, I'm, you know, if you, <laughs> doctor. I feel like I need to address you as Dr. Perry, but you know, at the same time, you tell me. No, that that works for me. That that's fine. You know, Dr. Perry. Some say Dr. Coach Perry because. Coaching still runs in my veins. Any chance I get? I was gonna say I, I typically refer to you like when I'm talking, you know, to, to others. I, I typically say Coach Perry from Broward County, but I'm like, damn, he's a, he's a doctor, so I got to throw in the Doctor Perry. So I was I was making sure <laughs> the bottom line straight and such. Um, but again, man, Doctor Perry, I appreciate you jumping on. You know, giving us a nice preview of what this Broward County Showcase is, what it represents, and what we get to look forward to. Uh, so again. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Share, comment, tell us, you know, what you're looking for forward to. Tell us about some of the matchups. Who do you want to see, you know, in next year's showcase? Whatever it is, man, let's help the algorithm push this thing out there so we can continue to give these kids the exposure. Dr. Perry, I'm gonna see you in uh, about a month and a half, man. You enjoy the rest of your summer. If you have time to enjoy it, I'll talk to you next time. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure you and I will be talking plenty more before you come down. So you, you have, I'll just say, have the rest of uh, a good night for the rest of the evening. Yeah. Likewise, man. So subscribe, Spotlight 39. Follow us across social media, Broward County Showcase. Looking forward to it. Till next time, I'm Rob Bodie. I appreciate you.